Imagine if you could onboard and make use of new data sources in your MDM platform three times faster than you can today. Imagine if enabling bidirectional connectivity to a new source of data from your MDM was just a matter of hours, not weeks or months of effort. Imagine if you could halve the time it takes to figure out cross-sell candidates after an acquisition or a list purchase. What would that mean to you in terms of productivity improvements, time to market, and risk mitigation? At Reltio, everything we do is about reducing time to value. And that's why the Reltio Integration Hub offers a vast number of integrations out of the box to cloud-based apps and storage platforms. It augments our existing set of integration methods with a low-code, no-code approach that expedites the development process and removes the need to execute lengthy cross-functional development projects every time you need to add some data to your MDM or get some data from it to use elsewhere. In this demonstration, I will play the role of a citizen integrator or data analyst who's been asked to integrate two new sources of data into my Reltio environment via the Reltio Integration Hub. The first of my two sources is a custom-built loyalty application on AWS that generates JSON files in S3 for every create or update, and the second source is Salesforce.com. I've been provided with read-only credentials to access both the S3 bucket and my Salesforce instance, and I've been given a sample JSON file resulting from the create or update in the loyalty app. So let's get started. I'm now in the Reltio Integration Hub console, which is where I can create and manage my integration processes via what we call recipes. Here you can see an existing recipe to connect my loyalty app to Reltio via S3. We'll have a quick look at this one, and then we'll create a brand new recipe to connect our Salesforce instance to Reltio from scratch. If I step into the loyalty app to Reltio recipe, I can see this entire integration flow consists simply of six easy to understand steps oriented in a vertical fashion. Every recipe starts with a trigger and is then followed by the various actions to perform the integration. The triggering app, as we can see in this case, is Amazon S3. This is just one of hundreds of different apps that can be used as the starting point for a recipe, as you can see by this extensive list. Each app in turn has various triggering actions that I can select from to kick off the process. In this case, my triggering action is the arrival of a new file in the specific S3 bucket. As files are picked up by the trigger, they're sent to the next step, which is a JSON parser, whose sole responsibility is to create a structured schema out of the JSON content that we can use in the subsequent step to connect the loyalty schema to Reltio schema. The JSON parser takes a sample document as input in order to create the schema for me. The next step is where I can ingest the data into Reltio. Similar to all apps being exposed in the Reltio Integration Hub, you can see all the different actions that can be leveraged during the inbound integration. Along with this, I select a connection to a tenant, and then I specify whether I want to ingest data about an entity, relationship, or interaction. Then I select the entity type or relationship type or interaction type. These selections will in turn automatically expose the Reltio logical data model, where I then map each of the attributes from my input data to their Reltio equivalents. This mapping exercise is a one-off task to connect the two schemas to support the integration. The power of this approach lies in the simplicity of the fact that I'm not concerned about the mechanics of the integration. I'm simply connecting two schemas together and letting the underlying technology take care of the mechanics of connecting to an S3 bucket, checking for the latest files, parsing the JSON contents, connecting to a Reltio tenant, and then making a REST API call to deliver a JSON payload to Reltio in the format required. If an error occurs during my flow, I catch it here where very simply I'm sending an email to a specific user to alert them to the fact that we've had an error. To give this a quick test, I can simply click on Test Recipe to perform an end-to-end -end test. Here you can see the recipe checking the S3 bucket for the arrival of a new file. Once it detects the new file, the flow starts, and at the end of the test, I can step into each of the steps to see inputs and outputs to determine that everything is working as planned. Once I'm comfortable that this recipe is performing as it should, I can simply click on Start Recipe for it to constantly monitor for the arrival of new files in my S3 bucket. Let's now create a new recipe from scratch to connect my Salesforce instance to Reltier. I'll call this recipe Salesforce to Reltier. I want this recipe to be triggered by an action in Salesforce, so the starting point I'll select is the one called Trigger from an App. 
Note the other options available in terms of my starting point for this recipe. I'll select Salesforce as my triggering app, and now I'll look for the specific triggering action that meets my needs. Because I want to sync new and changed records from Salesforce in real time, I'll look for the real time action on new or updated records. This then leads me to select my Salesforce connection. I can then choose which object in Salesforce I want this action to occur on. Note the introspection of the Salesforce model here, making it very easy for me to select the right one. In my case, I'll choose the contact object as the one to monitor, and I'll elect to have all the attributes visible for integration. I now want to add a step. Note all the available options open to me. In order to be a good citizen integrator, I'll add an error handler as my next step. Within the error handler, I can now add Reltio in the subsequent step where it's asking me to select an app and an action. Once I've selected Reltio, I can then choose the appropriate action. In my case, create record. This supports both create and update, by the way. I then specify my Reltio connection information, choose whether I'm interested in integrating to an entity type relationship or an interaction type. From there, I choose my entity type, individual in this case. This will now in turn expose all the relevant attributes within this entity type for me to perform a mapping. I'll start with selecting the crosswalk, which is how we tell Reltio where the data is coming from and what the primary key is. I'll also grab first name, last name, and email address. I'm now going through the mapping process, which is a one-off exercise to connect the two schemas together. I now want to be able to expose some information about the error if one occurs. I'll choose the logger app and place the error message that'll come from the error handler into the message output. I can now give my recipe a quick test to see if everything is working as expected. Once the test completes, I can look at the inputs and the outputs of every single step, starting with picking up a contact from Salesforce and ending with delivering that contact into Reltio. Looking at these inputs and outputs, I can see that the record was successfully created in Reltio. As a citizen integrator, I'll declare victory here and start this recipe so it can continuously deliver new or change contacts in Salesforce to Reltio. In this demonstration, we saw how easy it was to connect two new sources to the Reltio environment to improve time to value and reduce risk from an integration perspective. Like what you saw in this video? Keep watching this series to see more demos of our product in action, or contact us for a complimentary consultation with our team. Thanks for watching.